the summary of the standard is to analyze and compare two and three dimensional shapes. It is the foundation for geometry. For the young ones, it helps for them to tie in with their environment and they're able to learn many things around their environment by using the terms that are geometric terms. I started with a book. I wanted to capture their attention. They love books. And then, of course, I, I picked that book for a special reason. It included the square in the rectangle. And as for young children, most of the books are only going to talk about a square. Um, a square is a square, a rectangle is the traditional longer rectangle. Um, but in, you know, the, in kindergarten, yes, they learn that this is a square, but they also learn that it is a special rectangle. So since this book had the squares within the rectangles and just identify as rectangles, I thought this is perfect. Oh. If you see the shape of this confetti, Raise your hand. Tell me what you notice. Oh my gosh. Okay. If you know the the name that we call that confetti, say it out loud. Square. 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 Special what, do rectangle. We, what do we know about a square? It's a special rectangle. You know what? This and so um, I pick one and I use the sticks too with their names and it's red and green on, on the ends. So that, that way is a way to kind of keep track of making sure that I'm not calling on the same children all the time. So the sticks is a good thing to use as you're, as you're teaching. Um, when the children are done, I say, um, I say, touch your head when you're done. It's just a, you know easy thing to do. Um, it's not tiresome like holding your hand up in the air. So touch your head is just an easy thing to do. Then from the book, I went into the bag activity. Think about, you want to involve the whole child, so think about their five senses. And so in that instance, that was the sense of touch. And so they would reach in there and try to figure out, you know, feel that shape. We not only name the shapes, but we are describing the shapes using the words vertex, vertices. You know, they don't, they haven't heard those words before, but they're understanding them, you know, we're applying them. Oh, two sides are short and two sides are long. Very good, excellent. It has four sides. Yes, it has four vertices. Four vertices. And what are the vertices, friends? The partner time is so important because then they can really hear from each other. They can learn from each other. If they make mistakes, you know, that's how we learn. Um, if I just all the time called on one child at a time, not everyone's going to be able to get caught. It, it would take too long. We would never accomplish a lot. And so this way, you're giving the children an opportunity to to get involved. So the partner um, learning, the, the time for them to share with each other is so important. So then from there, then I wanted them to be able to um, come up with their being able to pick an alike group and then um, being able to name that, that alike group. And so we passed out the shapes and we went to our seats and we did that. Green group and a not green group. A circle group and a not circle group. A red group and not red group. It's I love red. That's my favorite color. Um, if the student is just not understanding something, but you let them verbalize. Let them tell you because I knew a child was having trouble with with something when we were sorting during the lesson and I said well now well what do you think let them talk more and then also then he said well I just need some more time try, try to not make it too complicated no you can skip me out I'm, I'm, gonna, try, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to like switch it a little okay. bit because it looks too hard. all right you do that buddy all right anybody else okay cool green group in and out. I said okay so then I walked off and he had more time and he came up with something you know, you don't want to put a child on a spot, give them that time, and, and then see what happens from there.
it connects with real real world activities because at this young age they're looking around the you know they're looking around everywhere and they happen to see a tree and they would they want to go to the easel and they want to paint that tree well how are they going to paint that tree oh they can think about the shape of that tree and the tree trunk is a rectangle the top part of the tree can be a circle and then they can interact with their environment more with that knowledge. Um, I had children that painted a spring picture and um, a child, and, and this was after we had done three-dimensional shapes, and a child um, painted a wonderful swimming pool. And I looked at that swimming pool and it was like awesome. And it was a result of us with the activities that we did with the three-dimensional shapes, not only were we holding them and, and counting the sides and so forth, but we also, pre we also drew, drew it to the best of our ability. So, um, but they are able to connect to the world with this knowledge, but they have to be given the terms. They have to be able to understand the terms. So it's our responsibility to plant those seeds by us saying them. We need to verbalize them.